That's the reason why all these things are going to happen to them. How do we know that they know better? They know better because the whole northern kingdom, the ten tribes, are already in captivity. And why is the ten tribes in captivity? For the exact reason that he's telling them that they're about to go into captivity. So, all right then. So, not only do they know better, they've seen the example. Mm -hmm. The whole kingdom of Jude, uh, Israel, the northern kingdom, is in Assyria. And Jeremiah is about to watch the children of, the children of Judah, the kingdom of Judah, go into Babylon. And he's telling them why right here. Because of the wickedness of their doing to provoke the Lord to anger. Verse 19. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? So he's letting them know, you trying to hurt me. <laughs> you only hurting yourself. You're doing it to yourself. You doing this like, like your parents say, you, you doing it to yourself. Yeah. You trying to provoke me to anger. You don't even understand. You doing this to yourself. Continue. Verse 20, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man, and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn, and shall not be quenched. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices, and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them, in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. So he's letting them know mm -hmm. that all of this wickedness that they're doing unto the queen of heaven, they're not doing it by commandment of the Lord. They're doing it because of the wickedness of their own heart. They're doing it because they followed after the customs of the idolatries of the other nations, making cakes and burning incense to the queen of heaven. Read. Verse 23, but this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. So he says, that's the commandment that I gave them. Mm -hmm. I didn't command them to do the wickedness that they're doing. I gave them a commandment to trust in the Lord, keep his commandments, obey me with all their heart. That's what came from the Lord. And that was going to be their salvation. That was going to be our salvation. Continue. 24. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. They went backward and not forward. Read. And you look at it, 24, he says, they did not only did they not listen, they didn't even consider. When he says, nor inclined their ear, they didn't even bother to listen or consider what was going on and what was being said. 25. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising early up. Daily. Daily. Rising, excuse me, daily rising up early and sending them. So it's letting you know every day. The Lord has never left our nation without people to warn them, to teach them, to guide them away from destruction. Has that changed today? No. no. That's not changed. Even though none of us are going to rise up and say, I'm a prophet. I'm a, some people out there, that's prophets, many. you got all of them. But the Lord still has his teachers out there. Rising up early, teaching the Bible, doing video shows, doing cable shows, doing radio shows, writing articles, making websites, making all these things putting it out there, teaching on the street, teaching on your job, teaching at your house, to make sure that this word goes out to people. Why? Because the Lord ordained it to be that way. It's our job to warn his people. The problem is that even though he was sitting since the past, since ancient antiquity, making these prophets, filling them with the Holy Spirit, raising them up and sending them out early to warn the children of Israel. But what happened? Let's find out. Verse 26. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. They did worse than their fathers. So even what we're talking about right now with the Queen of Heaven, how they worship the Queen of Heaven, how they made cakes to the Queen of Heaven, how they sacrificed to the Queen of Heaven. The Lord said the generations are doing worse than their fathers. Is that true concerning the Queen of Heaven? No. How do we know? They're still keeping Easter and they're still celebrating. And what else do they do? 
They try to shame you for not teaching it. They brought it into the church of God. Oh. That's cool. what they did. That's what they did. What we're looking at right here, everybody knew it was wicked. Exactly. Everybody knew it was evil. Everybody knew it was idolatry. Everybody knew that it had nothing to do with the Heavenly Father. They knew that. Mm -hmm. The reason why this generation has done worse than all of our fathers is because they took something wicked, evil, detestable that the Lord hated, brought it into the church and said that this is of God, and even worse, said that it's about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. When it never, ever, from the dawn of time up until now, had anything to do with it. And everybody knew that. It never and, and it's so wicked because what they knew back then was evil. They knew the difference between the evil and the good. This generation has taken what was evil, put it in the place of good, taken what was good, and now call that evil. It's completely backwards now. That's what they say. So, we're going to listen to more on that whole topic with the, with the Queen of Heaven. Because we had, we had more about where it actually came from and how that clip came in. But before we go there, we're going to go to the other. In that clip that we played, there was another scripture that was quoted. That was the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 8. All right. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 8, verse 12. And this is an image that the Lord gave to Ezekiel, showing him the wickedness that was taking place in the temple of God. And even right now, it's happening in, in the so-called church of God. We say so-called church of God because that they, call it, they call it the church of our Lord. They call it the church of Jesus. They, they have the Bibles in the church. They have pastors and preachers. But they, it doesn't have anything to do with the scriptures. Verse 12. Ezekiel 8 and 12. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his oh, in the cha in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. So what's what are they saying? They're saying that the Lord does not see the wickedness and the evil that we're doing. Why? Because the Lord has forsaken the earth. And this is done, they're doing this in the temple. And right, right then, we talked about what makes this generation more wicked than that last. The thing that makes this generation more wicked, they knew at least to try to hide. Mm -hmm. They were hiding doing their wickedness. The dark, right? They were in the dark doing their wickedness. Where is this wickedness doing, done right now? On the pulpit. Openly. On the pulpit. Over. Taught in the congregations. On, like, on TV, radio, everywhere you go, it's there. So, now let's read it. 13. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. There sat women weeping for Tammuz. Weeping for Tammuz. And we already know... Utamazus, according to their ancient myth, that was the son of Semiramis. That was the son of, that was, he was supposedly the first immaculate conception born of the sun god Nimrod himself. That's where it all came from. Anybody remember what Lent is, according to, according to this world? It's supposed to be uh, like 40 days leading up to um, Easter. This is right off our website. Ash Wednesday and Lent. The celebration of carnal varies in Lent throughout the world, but it comes to an end on what is called Fat Tuesday or Shrove Tuesday. Shrove comes from the Old English word shrive, which means to absolve people of their sin. This further proves that many so-called Christians believe that they are forgiven of all the abominations they commit, they commit during the season of carnival. So that's what you're talking about. People go out and they fornicate all through that season. Mardi Gras is the more popular name for Fat Tuesday. After Fat Tuesday comes Ash Wednesday, which marks the beginning of Lent, the so-called Holy Season. Now the switch is made from honoring Bacchus to honoring the goddess of fertility. Isis, Ishtar, Ashtaroth, Diana, and the Queen of Heaven are just a few of the names 
that people have named her over the years, but it is still the same item. On Ash Wednesday, she is honored by baking hot cross buns. Now, what are the hot cross buns? Those are the same cakes that are baked to the Queen of Heaven that we just now read about in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 18. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire. The women knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. In the past, the children of Israel knew that they were committing idolatry, but continued to serve these idols, believing that they would receive carnal blessings, like money, houses, food, etc., in return. In truth, they only provoked the anger of the Heavenly Father, bringing more wrath upon themselves. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 16. And this is the words that the children of Israel spoke to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 44, 16 and 17. As for the word that thou hast spoken to unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing going forth out of our own mouth, to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, for then had we plenty of victuals, wow. and were well, and saw no evil. So what does that mean when they said that we had plenty of food, were well, and saw no evil? Anthony. It, it was almost similar to what uh, our people said in the book of Maccabees. When uh, when we stopped serving these idols, you know, we, we never had any food, but when we start serving these idols, and that's when we got the riches and the, and the glory and the, all the benefits that came with serving those idols. So the women said to Jeremiah, we're not going to stop serving these idols because every time we stop serving these idols, we stop getting blessed with carnal possessions. So that's, the, that's a really, really powerful statement that they said. They literally told, they literally told Jeremiah, as for the word that you've spoken unto us out of the mouth of God, we will not hearken into that, but we will surely do whatsoever proceeded out of our own mouth. So how is that any different than what's said today? And we tell people, listen, all these holidays y'all keeping, they're wicked, they're pagan, they have nothing to do with the scriptures, they're idolatrous in nature, we're supposed to be keeping the Passover. And they say, well, that's for the words you speak out of that Bible. We're not going to listen to that. But we're surely going to do whatever proceeded out of our preacher's mouth and out of our own mouth. And we're going to continue keeping all these days as we kept them. But that just goes to show you the depth of the idolatry that they're dealing with. So now let's go into another audio clip. Easter is much more than a pagan imposter pretending to be Christian, lurking behind the pretty facade. Easter is a cover-up for the greatest fraud of all time. A calendar change which hides the true day of the resurrection and the true seventh day Sabbath. As the years passed and the first Christians died, paganism began to corrupt the once pure faith. The church in Rome, greedy of ever greater power, sought ways to increase her influence. To conciliate the pagans to nominal Christianity, Rome, pursuing its usual policy, took measures to get the Christian and pagan festivals amalgamated. And by a complicated but skillful adjustment of the calendar, it was found no difficult matter in general to get paganism and Christianity, now far sunk in idolatry, in this, as in so many other things, to shake hands. This change of the calendar in regard to Easter was attended with momentous consequences. It brought into the church the grossest corruption and the rankest superstition. This change of calendar also changed the day of worship. This is admitted by Roman Catholics who point to it as the sign of their authority. Sunday is purely a creation of the Catholic Church. They, the Protestants, deem it their duty to keep the Sunday holy. Why? Because the Catholic Church tells them to do so. 
They have no other reason. The author of the Sunday Law is the Catholic Church. Thing about Easter being on Easter, whole thing about Easter Sunday. Mm. That wasn't just about Easter Sunday. It was also about them pushing the whole doctrine of Sunday being the true Sabbath. When we know, according to the Scriptures, Sunday is, I mean, the Sabbath is the seventh day of the week, mm -hmm. not the first. But that's why it all links together with the hypocrisy, the idolatry, and the wickedness, because it all links to Easter as well. One Catholic bishop went so far as to state, It was the Catholic Church which made the law, obliging us to keep Sunday holy. The Church made this law long after the Bible was written. Hence, the law is not in the Bible. The Catholic Church abolished not only the Sabbath, but all the other Jewish festivals. The Israelite festival, which was outlawed in favor of Easter, was Passover. All early Christians kept the Feast of Yahuwah as outlined in Leviticus 23. Paganized Christians still wanted to celebrate Easter, while apostolic Christians, still clinging to a pure faith, observed Passover. So the point being is that everybody in the church at that time understood that they were willfully bringing in pagan festivals into the church. They did it for money, they did it for power, they did it for the same reasons why they're doing it today. That's the reason why when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it lets you know that there's a penalty for doing that. The penalty of bringing that into the church, or the penalty of following after these festivals, in any way, shape, or form, makes you guilty of idolatry. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and I'm going to start at verse 14. All right. 1 Corinthians 10 and 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of the blessing which we bless, is it not, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? So when you read about that in 1 Corinthians 11, about the, the drinking, of the, drinking of the cup and the breaking of the bread, which we read, which you read, when the Lord, when the Lord had that so-called Last Supper with the disciples, where He break the bread and pass the cup and let them sup, letting them know that they were eating and drinking the body of the Lord, the body of Christ. Continue. Seventeen. For we, being many, are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh. Are not they which eat of the sacrifice partakers of the altar? What say I then? That the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to the idol is anything? So he's letting them know that even when you look at Israelites that were still in the temple, they sacri the sacrifices that were made to the Heavenly Father, they ate of those sacrifices. But he's saying now, when you look at the idols that are out there, there's sacrifices that are made unto those idols as well, are they not? Mm -hmm. So he's saying, the same way you look at the sacrifices that the temple made to the Most High, the people partook of those sacrifices. When we ate the bread, when we do the communion of the Lord, we eat the bread and drink the wine, why are we doing that? To commemorate the body and blood. To commemorate the body and blood of the Lord, which he shed that night. We read about that in 1 Corinthians 11, chapter. For as often as you do this, you do show the Lord's death till he returns. So if we decide that we're not going to partake of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, and we're not going to partake of the holy days which were given to us in the scriptures, but instead we're going to partake of the wicked pagan days that are appointed by this world in commemoration of Satan, when we partake of those sacrifices, who are we giving honor to? Satan. And that's the whole point that Paul is making right here when he's bringing this out about the altar and the sacrifices that are on the altar. So first time, first time. Go ahead. Let's <laughs> see when we start back at 18 and read straight through. Sure. Okay. <laughs> first Corinthians, I'm starting again at uh, 18. 10 and 18. Behold, Israel after the flesh. 
Are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then? That the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. So it's letting you know right there, we're not supposed to have fellowship with devils. Yes, good boy. It just goes to show you that, remember, the reason he's saying you have a fellowship is because you're partaking of these things, yeah. sacrifice to the idol. So there's no way for you to separate or blend it. You can't say, like you mentioned earlier, a person lead a Passover and then go to the Easter, Easter Sunday thing and think, well, you know, I'm just doing this for my family. I'm just doing this for whatever. When you start to partake of those things, you are having fellowship with those things. You can call it whatever you want in your mind. But by participating and to partaking of those things, you have fellowship with that. And it's going to explain why you can't separate the one from the other. Because we already know, like Paul's going to explain later, an idol is nothing in the world. Mm -hmm. But still, we know what, it's going to, what it means to the people that do not understand. Mm -hmm. I'll start at verse 20 again. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Read. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Mm. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. So he's let, we already know where these things come from. They're steeped in idolatry from the beginning and never had anything to do with Jesus Christ. And even if you look right now, we're reading the book of 1 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians mm -hmm. is after the death and resurrection of our Lord. And what would our forefathers still keep it? Were they keeping Easter? No, Passover. They were keeping Passover. So if we're looking at the church that the Lord established, if we're looking at the body of Christ being formed, and we see the holidays that they're keeping, aren't those the holidays that we should be keeping? Mm -hmm. And should be observing? We don't read about Paul and them keeping Christmas, talking about this is Jesus' birthday. We don't read about Peter talking about, oh, well, this is... Easter Sunday, the day that the Lord rose from the dead. We don't read about any of that. But we do read about them keeping the Passover. We do read about them keeping the Feast of Dedication. The Sabbath. We do read about them keeping the Sabbath day. We read about all of those things. And this was the church that the Lord formed. Mm -hmm. Not the church that they say the Lord formed. Because you know that that's the Catholics. They say that that's, they, they claim that, that they're the only church made and established by Jesus Christ. They even have a commercial, come back to the Catholic Church, the only church made by Jesus Christ. And they believed that. Jesus himself laid the foundation for our faith when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. For over 2,000 years, we've had an unbroken line of shepherds guiding the Catholic Church with love and truth in a confused and hurting world. And in this world filled with chaos, hardship, and pain, it's comforting to know that some things remain consistent, true, and strong, our Catholic faith, and the eternal love that God has for all creation. If you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. Ours is one family, united in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are Catholic. Welcome home. So you look at that, they were the ones that fell. They were the ones that brought idolatry in the church. They were the ones that sanctioned idolatry in the church. They were the ones that made it lawful to bring paganism into the church. They were the ones that changed the Sabbath day from the seventh day, according to the book of Genesis, all the way onward to the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. from the seventh day of the week to the first day of the week, which is why if you look up the word, Sabbath is going to tell you, or if you look up the word um, Saturday, it'll say the seventh day of the week. If you look up the word Sunday, it'll say the first day of the week and the Christian Sabbath. <laughs> if you look up Sabbath in Spanish, it's, it's going to say Sabado, mm -hmm. which means, well, if you look up Saturday in Spanish, it's going to say Sabado, which also means Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So you look at it, everybody can. Everybody knew that they were bringing in that idolatry, but they did it with a willfully, willing heart. And they still, to this day, even in the midst of their idolatry, claim they're doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. 
making their sin all the greater because now they're breaking the third commandment, which is what? Thank you, Anthony. Taking the Lord's name in vain. They're taking the Lord's name in vain. They're taking the Lord's name and teaching lies. The first commandment, no other God before me, the second, no idols, the third, you're taking the name of the Lord in vain. Meaning that you're saying the Lord said something that he did not say. The Lord did not tell you to bake cakes to the Queen of Heaven. The Lord did not tell you that to come and go to church on Easter Sunday and give out Easter eggs and have an Easter egg hunt and do egg rolls. No, not egg rolls, like the Chinese egg rolls. <laughs> Literally. The Easter egg rolls. Yeah. Come, somebody come to the light back there for the sisters. The, the Easter egg roll, and that the Easter bunny is going to come giving, giving candy and presents to the children. <laughs> you don't see that in the scriptures. So, verse 21 again. All right. Verse 20 again. We're still in 1 Corinthians 10, and this is verse 20. But I say that the things which the, which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. So he had to let them know. The things that they sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And why do you have to say it that way? Because even thousands of years later, over 2,000 years later, you have people drinking from the cup of devils, eating from the table of devils, and they're saying they're doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But Paul let us know all the way back then, if you're doing these things, you're not partaking of the cup of Christ. You're not partaking of the table of Christ. You're partaking of the cup and of the table of devils. That's the reason why in the verse above, don't we do the sacrifices of the Lord? Don't we do, don't we keep the feast days outlined by the Lord in Leviticus the 23rd chapter? Even when you read, even when you listen to the world teachings of the clip that we just now played, the, the narrator said the same things. He was like, listen, the early Christians kept the feast days of the Passover, which was as it was outlined in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. You don't read about early Christians talking about we celebrate Easter. Verse 20 again. Verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. Read. And I would not that ye should have right, I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. And that's for the people that think they can have it both ways. You ain't going to be celebrating Easter and the Passover. You're not going to be celebrating the Feast of Dedication and Christmas. You're not going to be celebrating the new moons and the Sabbath days, then go right back and start celebrating Thanksgiving. You can't partake of the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils, the table of the Lord and the table of devils. Continue. 22. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Read. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. So the same way he said is like, listen, things are lawful, because it might be, it might be lawful meat. It might be food that's not defiled, but should we still be eating it if it's not going to be to the edification of the people that's around us? If we're setting a bad example in Christ, then how are we going to call that righteousness? It's not righteous. Read. 24. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. So explain that to somebody. The scripture says, let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Because it, he's letting us know. The, re, the whole thing is that the Most High is bringing us into a body. And the one thing you have to understand is that all the members of the body are connected. They, there is no part of the body that will be affected that's not going to affect the other body. So what the, what the scripture is trying to show us is really he's teaching about charity. And we're not supposed to be selfish and seek our own and the things we want or, or the things that bring us pleasure or anything like that. What we're supposed to be seeking is how do we, the most of us going to take care of us, but how do we build up our brother? How do we... Uh, uh, do what is going to be edifying to our brother. How do we uh, uh, show charity to our brother? That's that's the main focus that we're supposed to have because that's the love. All he's talking about is loving your neighbor as yourself. That's so why it. would he? Why is he bringing that out in relation to 
the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils and the wicked idolatries that's going on. So why would he go into verse above mm -hmm. where it says, oh, yeah. all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. So Kabbal brought it out, let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth, was going into having that love and charity true. But what does that mean in relationship to what we understand about this idolatry? I don't believe it's, no, uh, it's written. Um, how you got your hand up? Well, um, <clears throat> when it's talking about all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient, all things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. As we understand the scriptures and we understand that when we have to deal in, these, uh, in this world day by day, we know that we have the understanding of the Lord, the law, statutes, commandments, and serving him through the Lord through, and keeping those things through Christ. But our true purpose is to edify, is to be an example. And by doing that, we uh, build up the church, we build up our people. So the whole purpose is we're not seeking, we're not living just for ourselves. We're living also for the, uh, for the serving of the Lord. And, his, and what he told us to do was to be an example and to teach and bring in our brothers and sisters through our example. And if we have to be an example by not seeking our own, by not seeking our own means that we are being an example to others. And, uh, the, um, in um, this verse where it says... Uh, um, in verse 24, let no other man seek his own, but another, but every man another's wealth. This is talking about being considerate uh, for the to, for the understanding of the other people. There's people who don't understand everything that we know. Thank you. So in verse in chapter eight, it tells you about that. Uh, chapter 8, verse 1, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse really 1. verse 10 through 13. Yeah. It says, Now in touching the things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but charity edifies. Uh, and it, then it goes on to, to say that, oh, in verse 7, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7, how be it, there's not in every man that knowledge. So we all know that there's only one God. We, we know we're supposed to keep the high holy day in Leviticus 23. But a lot of people, they don't have that same understanding. So if we eating a, a meatloaf sandwich from, from uh, the Easter dinner, yeah, that beef may be lawful, but then somebody who, who's, who may not understand or who's an unbeliever, they look at you eating that, that lawful sandwich from, from Easter dinner, they were like, well, he's an Israelite, and he and he keeps the commandments, and and but he ate that he ate that Easter dinner, mm -hmm. so that means I can keep Easter. I guess it's okay, but that's why it tells you that we're supposed to be considerate for other people's understanding, and not just thinking, not not considering our own understanding. We're supposed to consider everybody else. I said it's not. Okay. Right. So so verse twenty four. Read that again, Bajra. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. So you could take that word wealth and substitute it out with salvation. Because when you look at what we're supposed to be doing, we're supposed to be making sure that everybody gets their edification and that everybody is in a position where they can get their own salvation. And what happens is when we look at seeking our own, that's going into what Andy brought up about being considerate. That's being inconsiderate if you're thinking to yourself, well, you know what? I understand that an idol is nothing. I understand that there's no such thing as the queen of heaven. I understand that it's only a heavenly father. I understand that. I understand that there's no Astaroth. There's no Easter. I understand that there's no Nimrod and Semiramis. That's not even a Semiramis. There's none of that. I understand that. But... Like it tells you in 1 Corinthians 8, there is not in every man that knowledge. And some people do believe that there are other things out there. Some people would be offended. Some people would be hurt. Their conscience would be destroyed if they saw us setting a bad example. So by us seeking another man's wealth, we're not just sitting there saying, well, you know what? I'm hungry. I'm eating. I didn't break no law. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm eating. I didn't break no law. I didn't do nothing wrong. What did I do wrong? I ate a meatloaf sandwich, right, Anthony? Or beef meatloaf sandwich. 
a beef <laughs> <laughs> Some of them mixed with pork. Anthony, stop it. We got the point the first time. Yeah. Well, I'm just considerate for everybody. <laughs> 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 Oh my gosh! Yes, I just I just want to read this part in eight because you know, like we like we. So we're gonna go to eight, but um. Oh, okay, I mean I wait. Man. You know, yeah, we. 